We're now going to take a look at structure charts being used as a visual template for planning source code. So basically a structure chart is used to graphically model the hierarchy of processes within a system. Through the hierarchical format, the sequence of processes along with the movement of data and control parameters can be mapped for interpretation. The control structures of sequence selection and repetition can all be represented within the chart for modeling the system. So let's now take a look at the actual symbols and structures used in this diagram, which allows us to create a structure chart. Firstly, we have a process or module subroutine. This is a series of instructions that are going to be carried out by a program at a specific point. Next, we have the call line, which indicates the path between two modules or subroutines, basically between any two processes. And these actually show the sequence control structure within this structured chart. Next, we have a decision, which is represented kind of by a right angle type symbol, which joins the processes together. It's used to represent the selection control structure by splitting the sequence into multiple parts. After this, we have repetition, okay, which is representing repetition through the use of a curved arrow, highlighting that a process can occur multiple times. And then we have two similar looking symbols. We have a parameter which indicates the flow of data between the process specifically what data is moving between the processes and it is labeled along with this uh, the symbol itself the actual data and then finally we have a control parameter which indicates a criteria has been met providing confirmation for the system to proceed okay so it highlights a flag in other words so something might have to be confirmed as occurring okay within a process before the program can continue so let's look at an example of an actual structure chart. So the following structure chart outlines the use of an email server. So to start off, we need to enter our login details. This would be entered into the system. The data moving into the system is the login details. The next process is the verification of these details. So we need to verify these details, okay, and compare them against an account's database. Once they are verified, we then send back a control parameter which says the details are okay, you can proceed. Moving on, we are loading the, the actual user's account so they can view the mailbox. The mailbox is displayed. From here, we have our first decision. In here, we are either opening a message or creating a message. If we are viewing a message, okay, basically we can reply or delete the message. Okay, if we delete the message, the message is deleted. Delete is okay, it gives you confirmation that the delete has taken place and then we'll return back to the view message screen. Okay, if we choose to reply, the message then is uh, sent across to the compose message screen. And you can actually see that the parameters are leading us back to the compose message screen. From here, okay, we can compose our message or reply depending on the case, okay, where the message is sent to the recipient. So we basically send the message, we have the recipient address as within our uh, parameters too, and the message is sent, and then we get the actual control parameter telling us after the send message that the message has been sent okay, and then we can proceed once again. If there was any issue in the message sending, then obviously we wouldn't get a send okay, an error message would, be a, a would appear and leave us on the actual compose screen and maybe attempt us to send it again. The other thing that can occur as well at the compose message screen is repetition. If we are sending out a message in bulk, okay, it's gonna be then sending the the same process of sending the message to multiple users, being an example of repetition there. So I hope this gives you an, an understanding and an introduction to the use of structured charts, essentially how they show the different control structures within the diagram of sequence selection and repetition through the uh, different use of different symbols, as well as showing the flow of data, okay, using the white circle with arrow just to show the data flowing between processes and the black circle with arrow showing uh, control parameters, basically things that need to be satisfied or confirmed by the program before the program can proceed. So I hope this has been a good introduction for you.